and welcome to today's show, The Breakthrough Podcast. I am your host, Reba Bell. This podcast is brought to you by From Ashes to Beauty Coaching. Go to RebaBell.com to sign up for your free consultation today. Welcome, guys. Thank you for obtaining another episode, watching, sharing, liking another episode of the Breakthrough Podcast. I am so excited for today's interview because we are continuing on the path of financial literacy and financial education. And anytime that you have a breakthrough in anything in life, of course, we have to share it. We have to talk about it. We know that the word of the year for the Breakthrough Podcast is elevation. So why not elevate and go to the next level with your finances? I have a personal guest that I met years ago and we reconnected back on social media and she is awesome. She is a financial life coach and her name is Takesha Artis. Thank you for coming and being on the podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk. Okay. Okay. So what we're just going to go right into it because we just basically, this is guys, you already know how I work. This is conversation. We pretty much are in depth about everything that we go through or what we've been through. So Keisha, I just want to do the start off with telling us, how did you get here? What about your history? A little bit about your history. I know I've seen it on your um, bio, but a little bit about your history, who you are and go from there. Okay, well, let's just jump right in. So my <laughs> background is um, I'm actually an accountant, a certified public accountant. And um, personally, I hit rock bottom um, right after I graduated from college, um, just becoming a new mom, realizing I'm going to be a single mom. And I was at a place where I'm like, I cannot do this anymore. And so I used a financial tool called bankruptcy. And what that really made me realize is that I knew how to manage millions for corporations, but not Mm. really the thousands for myself. And so I'm like, you know, something, there's a disconnect somewhere. And what I realized is that all through my education, I had never been taught to manage my money personally. Not, I was taught to, you know, do corporate tax, um, you know, all of these things for business, but not really for myself. And so I, you know, filed for bankruptcy and I'm like, how can I get my finances back on track? And, you know, I started to do, you know, the traditional things, the spending plan, saving, but it wasn't until I realized like I had to really change my mindset. I had to change how I thought about money and what I was doing with my money. And that led me to kind of putting it on a shelf. You know, sometimes we're scared of the things that we're called to do. So we do other stuff. And um, I wanted to then help entrepreneurs really get their business finances together. But that thing kept coming back up. It's like they can't get their business finances together because their personal finances aren't together. So it was a mirror. And I'm like, here's that money mindset thing again. Here's that thought process that, you know, we are... um, we aren't where we are want to be because we don't believe we can be there or, you know, we let this money thing scare us. And so it just, my journey kind of turned into my mission to be quite honest. I love that. I love that. My number one thing when I've been, what I've been watching and following you for a while, but I love that something that you talk about is the mindset. Um, how the mindset got to equal up with the finances. And if your Mm -hmm. mindset is not there, I want you to evaluate on that a little bit more about how you coach and and teach people that. But I love that we understand that the mindset has to be at a certain place in order for your finances to be at another place. I was reading earlier, uh, scrolling through social media, I seen something that says something about yeah, you can fix your credit, but if your mindset is not right, then it doesn't matter what your credit is because you're going to go back into that same habit. So elaborate on what Mm -hmm. you do with the mindset. Absolutely. Um, You know, I used to say 
you know, we're not taught about money, but that's really not true. We are taught about it. We're, we have the model of behavior. We have the things that we've seen, that we've heard or experienced. And so those things actually did teach us. Um, mm -hmm. We just weren't taught proper handling. <laughs> we okay. weren't taught proper stewardship. Um, and so we've developed these um, habits and beliefs about what we think money is and we put a lot of emotion around money we we are very scared of money we it gives us anxiety because we don't have it so we want to ignore it Ooh. or we're, we're <laughs> I mean it's true or we're it's scared to, <laughs> or we're scared to get more money because we're we think we may you know, make mistakes with it, or it'll change us, or we'll feel greedy because others don't have it. So we have a lot of emotions tied to money, but what money really is, is just a form of exchange. It is a tool that we use of exchange. And when you take all of the emotion off of it, and I get it, it's going to take work to take that emotion off of it. But when you look at it as this is a tool, this is the end result of what I am doing. And the money is just the means to get what I want. A lot of times we think that we really want money and that's the end goal, but it's not. It's the things that money can afford us. We want the house. We want the car. We want the financial freedom. Money is just the tool that's going to get it. Yes. So it's really reshaping what we really think about money and what that what our own money story is. Now, when you say fear, because okay, yes, I I, I triggered am, you. <laughs> I am totally there. Okay, so I I talked about this on a, a previous podcast I just did yesterday, and I talked about not allowing your emotions your money to control your emotions. That's the name of the podcast. And mm -hmm. I had to personally, as you guys know, that watch me, it's personal. Everything that I talk about is a personal story. So I have to tell it. I had to get to the point and I'm getting to the point. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. That every time I am between, in between blessings is what you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I'm like really agitated. And I think my husband and my kids feel it the most because and like she is mad about something. I'm just like snappy. I'm like on edge because I'm like a okay, so this is what I said. I'm a budgeter. So I budget to the T. But if I have like ten dollars left over and yeah, the bills are paid, but I got ten dollars left over, I'll usually put that in a savings account or whatever. But then say is it something i totally forgot that was on the grocery list on the schedule toothpaste and that's a me okay that's a necessity i get so upset <laughs> i get so upset that i can't go find and buy that four dollar pack of toothpaste that i'll go to the dollar store and be like oh my god i gotta scrape up a dollar not saying that i don't have a dollar but it gets i get like agitated and i think like you said, with the fear, it all comes together. I kind of have this anxiety that I'm trying to break just now in my life that I'm like, where did I learn this from? It has to be my mom. My mom taught me about finances in very at a very early age. But I get so agitated when it comes down to finances. Even when I'm budgeting, my husband looks at me and he'd be like, you need some help? He is the math whiz, but I also get irritated because I'm like, you don't know how to budget. And if I try to explain it to you, I'm going to get irritated more. So just let me do this. I usually have to start putting on meditation music just to budget. So Okay, so, okay, so I'm going to tell you what I see coming up. Um, I feel like sometimes people put a lot of um, emotion on just the word budget. It feels mm -hmm. restrictive. It feels like I if, if the budget isn't balanced, then I... I can't do this. And so right. what I heard coming from you is you don't have the flexibility to allow your budget to be flexible. And so because it's not flexible, it feels restrictive. And when we feel restrictive, we want to fight. Yeah. Because you backing me into a corner. <laughs> so you're ready to come out swinging because you're like, I want this thing. I need this thing. And I can't have it, even though mentally, you know, you have the money. 
-hmm. But it's like, because your budget is saying this and you put it in your savings, you don't want to touch it. So now you feel irritated because you're like, I know I have the money, but Mm -hmm. I still can't do what I want to do. So it's bringing up that resistance and that um, restrictiveness. I don't know if you have this, but what I always tell my clients is you should have multiple savings accounts. Okay. You should have your one, uh, kind of like your check checking account, right? Mm-hmm. That's where the money comes in. You pay your bills out of. But then you should have your savings account, which is like your freedom fund. Okay. And so that's for long-term savings. And then you should have a savings account where it's like, in case something happens. So like, okay, you, you need a little bit of more money to cover um, the expenses this month, or you know something, a birthday is coming up. And so you're just putting money into this account that gives you that flexibility mm. when you need money that you didn't spend um, or that you overspent or something's just coming up. You can take from that account and it, it can be for anything. And it doesn't stop you from your future savings where, you know, this is just for, you know, whatever. And so it's kind of like that catch in between. So it's like, oh, okay, you look at the account and you're like, okay, there's an extra $60 in there. I'm going to do something nice for the kids or I'm going to do something nice for myself or, oh, I need $20 because, you know, I want to make this for dinner and you just get it out of there. So it's like no pressure. Um, You can take from it whenever you want, but you're still saving. And so that takes, a lot of the pressure off of now it's not messing with my future long-term goals. You got my wheels turning in there <laughs> because it make it, it makes so much sense only because I know that even with my husband, uh, you know, you know, the num- number one thing is arguing about finances usually in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And even with him say, because I'm the more frugal one, I'll say that. Um, if he want to get some burger here, I'm like, no, it's not. Yes. And it's like, it comes off patrolling and it comes mm-hmm. off as, dang, I just can't eat a burger today. And yeah. I had to realize like, dang, okay, you kind of really messing y'all up because yeah, you the frugal one, but at the same time, you a little too restrictive. So it is helping me Personally, you got my wheels turning or whatever and making me feel like, okay, I can actually do this. Yes. And I always say, you know, when it comes to money, my motto is this, buy the things that you love and let go of the things that you don't. Mm. Um, you know, we money isn't to be held on so tightly. Okay. That comes from scarcity, right? Because if I, if I buy these things or do these things with money, then I'm, the thought process is I won't get it back or it'll take longer for me to get it back. But when you operate from a sense of, well, I made this, I can make it again. If I can do this, I can get it again. If you're between blessings, you know, you'll be blessed again. Right. And so when you allow yourself to use money in a way that you are still making sure that things are being paid, you're making sure that you know, I, I, there's this, um, I don't know what to call it. I, I, I think it, I, I just call it a triangle of spending. Mm-hmm. And so when you start with spend on the, the needs, right, these are the basic necessities. And then when you start to spend on those things first, then you say, okay, let me add my security in there. So that's the saving, investing, So that now you know, okay, my needs have been met. Mm -hmm. My financial security is already taken care of what's left. Now I can buy the things that are a priority for me and my family. And that may include, um, you know, whatever. And then if there's money left, because your needs have already been met, your security has already met, you can buy those luxury things. And luxury can be different for people, different people. Some people, it can be bags and shoes. Some people, it can be, you know, dinner out. You know, it just depends on where you are financially. And there is no right or wrong. Um, But that gives you a lot more freedom to enjoy the money while still making sure that your needs have been met. I like that. I like 
like that. You're you're actually <laughs> you're actually coaching and helping me. <laughs> No, but seriously. that's for somebody else too. Yeah. Be, but because it, it's it, something it, you piggyback off of something you said when mm -hmm. it's you said something about scarcity and it made me think about, okay, I've been homeless twice. And so uh, I'm holding on so tightly because I'm afraid of being homeless again. Knowing that I won't be homeless again, mm -hmm. but at the same time the possibility of that happened before and it can happen again. So you're yeah. actually helping me personally, you know, and I tell people what, what breakthrough on my podcast, on my, my culture is aha, aha moment. You just made me have an aha moment. And this mm -hmm. moment, like, that's why you holding on so yeah. tight. Yeah, breakthroughs come in different um, ways for different people, but you know, that message, you may have needed to share your story because that may have been for someone else as well. The The thing with money that I find interesting is that um, the reasons that we feel the fear, the doubt, and the scarcity often don't make sense. But it's because of our experience. We hold that experience. And even if you have all of the money in the bank, you still have that experience that you've held on for years as evidence. And yeah. so your mind wants to hold on to that evidence, even though your situation is different. And that's why it's so hard for people to save money or, um, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, go to the next level financially, because it's very uncomfortable. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm comfortable making this amount of money. But when I want to raise my prices, all of a sudden, I, I raise the prices, but the people aren't coming. Well, it's not that the people aren't coming. It's just that you aren't comfortable with that new price. So it, it that energy comes through and how you talk in your message. And, you know, we all have different financial you know, ceilings. And I'll be honest, every time I get to a new level, I got to do the work over and over again. Mm. It, it is a lifelong process. I talked to uh, one of my best friends and, you know, she's a millionaire and she says the same thing. Like when I get to a certain level, it gets a little weird and I got to, you know, do the work all over again. And so it just let me know that this is a lifelong process. Even in business, you can be good in saving, but maybe investing is something that you're very uncomfortable with. And so yep. you're like, mm, it's not for me. Or mm -hmm. you can be good at investing and feel like, well, you know, being an entrepreneur isn't for me. We have these different um, money blocks on different things. Mine was receiving. And for a long time, I would be, I would come on social media. I would have great offers. And then I would make all of this money and I would retreat. And it was the third time that it happened. I'm like, why is this happening? And when I sat back with it, it was, I was uncomfortable receiving the money for, for my services. And I'm like, where did that come from? Number one, I wasn't comfortable selling. I'm, I'm an accountant, so I'm always in the background. And so now it's me showing up and being in the forefront. But now it's also me making, having to make offers. But when I looked at it a little bit deeper, it was receiving. I remember when I was younger, it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't a good thing to accept things from others because yep. my grandmother, you know, made me feel like, you know, when you give to others, they'll either want something from you or they'll think yep. that you're poor or whatever the, you know, whatever it was she was taught that was just passed on to me. And I had to really work through that, even gifts, compliments. Um, it just made me very uncomfortable. And as an adult, I had to work through that. And, you know, it, it was that young girl still holding on to that borrowed belief of receiving is, isn't really, or asking for you want, what you want isn't even comfortable. And so I had to really work on that. And I can see as an adult where those things played out in my life, my relationships, my business and money. Money is never about money. It's all about you. <laughs> it is all about you. How you feel about you, how you feel about yourself with money and how you feel about yourself with wealth. It's all it's about. It's never about money because money is just the tool. And it's, it's so, uh, it's just, I mean, 
guys, for real, she's coaching me. Um, uh, I don't even think she knew. <laughs> uh, because I just hear myself. Um, because I've always been so financially responsible. There's always people know we will save a penny, you know. But it gets to the point, like she said, and I'm sure anybody else that's listening has this thing where I'm at this point, like right now in my business, I am an entrepreneur, full-time entrepreneur. So this is what I do. I coach, I podcast, and that's pretty much what I do. And um, so as she's talking, I'm hearing me saying to myself, saying, okay, you have to go to the next level because just like she said, my fear that I've been having lately is, okay, increasing my prices because they do need to be increased because I'm doing way more than what I was a year ago. Um, and also having that fear to understand and accept that, okay, will somebody even accept the price that I'm giving them? And then secondly, also the investment part, because right now I want to invest in so much um, for my business, business wise. And even me holding on to that dollar, saying visually, I'm holding on to this dollar and like, well, the car might break down. That's what my mindset goes. Well, a bill, an extra bill might be due or well, that goes to emergency. I can't invest that money because, and I literally have the money sitting there, literally. And mm -hmm. talking to, hearing you talk is like, okay, you have to take that chance because if you don't take that chance, then you're still going to be, it's like what I heard you say is that I'm sitting in this box and I can't break these walls around me because I am this, and it's, I'm holding, I see myself sitting in a corner holding a dollar and say, nope, investment. Nope, you can't. I did, I, I'm at the point, I'm comfortable with my business, so I'm not going anywhere else. Mm, I'm good. And it's like, okay, but you wonder why, like I was explaining at the beginning, why you just got that $10. Maybe you'll have $1,000 left over and then you can be, you'll feel comfortable because you only had that $10 left over. You can't get back toothpaste. You get what I'm saying? So Exactly, exactly. Um, I think one of the things, you know, for, for me, what I hear for you is you just need to um, refrain. And so mm -hmm. you're a coach, so you know, I I feel like, you know, we're, we, okay, guys, let me, hold on, I'm going to look it up, because this is where I had my breakthrough when it came to, um, to my thought process. Mm -hmm. We have so many thoughts, and I'm, I just want to find the statistic on it that, um, Let's see. We have about 60,000 thoughts a day, right? Mm -hmm. Why can't I find it? Because I don't want to, okay, I don't want to mess it up. Okay, so we have 60,000 thoughts a day. 80% mm -hmm. of those are negative, right? 95% of those are the same thoughts. So what that means is you are re you are mm. repeating the same negative thoughts over and over and over and over again. They didn't know that. Uh oh. <laughs> so it make it, it makes sense that what when we're thinking about, you know, the money not being there it's, it's on repeat. Yep. So the, the hardest thing to do is to change a negative thought because it's, it's been on repeat. But what I say is, is the negative thought true? Is it ultimately true? If it's not true, what's the new positive thought that you want to replace it with? If it is true, what's the new perspective that you want to give that thought? And then at the end of the day, because you've had so much experience with this negative thought, you have to find some new support. You have to find new evidence of, well, if I raise 
because at some point your prices were zero, right? Because you weren't exactly. doing it. So when you established it, people were still buying. So at some point you have to get new evidence and new support to back this new thought or perspective. When you change the narrative, you have to change the support because the support is what you've been trying to go against. It's almost like your mind is saying this, but your goals are this. And that's, this is why people don't achieve their financial goals. It's not because the goal is wrong. It's because you aren't supporting the goal because you haven't had a lot of success with it. Mm. Everyone knows, okay, you should be saving something, but why aren't people saving? The average person has $600 yeah. in their savings account. Well, it's not that we don't know how to save, it's that what makes it uncomfortable for you? And it, for a lot of people, it's, well, I'm just going to spend it anyway, or um, I, I, I wouldn't know what to do with it, or it just makes them uncomfortable. It's getting to the root of that. But I've also found that sometimes you don't need to get to the root of why you are the way you are. You just have to decide that it's something different. Mm, okay so okay so I love that um I love that because I also coach I coach that's what I coach on I coach on the mindset but I coach on on the same aspect of what so I'm using my own stuff that you're teaching me I got to use it um uh because I do coach on not living in the past but what did happen in the past accept it and move up, up on from it and then um where are you at presently where does that mindset and how can we break those barriers down from that mindset so pretty much like you're saying if I have this barrier don't so focus on the negative barrier focus on okay how can we overcome that the same way that I coach about overcoming the you know traumas but with the money thing how can we mm -hmm. overcome the issue of having the money because you really don't have a money issue you have a mindset issue that's if I'm correct that's what you're saying yeah most money most money issues aren't about money they're about self it's okay. all about self it's I I don't feel comfortable with money I don't believe that I deserve money I don't believe that um I know enough about money to handle it so let me avoid it and so it's it's never about the money. It's always about the self. Um, and I think once people understand that, like I said, money is just the tool, um, money just becomes a thing. I, I look at money as like my best friend. Mm. And so, you know, what's the language that you're using with money? Again, that negativity, um, you know, are you, I'm broke and money is hard yep. to get and business is hard. And so, it's like, if that's your best friend and you're speaking negative, would your best friend want to be around you? No. Oh. Um, you know, are you mistreating money? This, this best friend who wants the best for you. And so if you're mistreating it, why would it stay? I love that. I love that. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> when, yes, you, I love that. Um, when you look, when you change how you look at money, your money changes. Okay. So what would you recommend? Oh, okay. So two part question. Mm -hmm. what, would you, what, would you, what would you recommend the best advice to get someone that is struggling with money? Um, and I know it's the mindset thing, but what would you recommend the first thing that they do? And then secondly, um, if they need extra help, like how can they reach out to you um, to get to where they need to go. Because of course we all need community and we all need someone to actually educate us. And I personally do, but <laughs> educate us on the money facet. So what would you recommend? So I think the best advice is that money is multifaceted. It, it, you need the mindset and you need the mechanics. So a lot of people, think that it's what to do with money is what matters but it isn't because you know what to do with it it's why you aren't doing it so I think you need the the right mindset and then when you have the right mindset you then know what to do with it 
Um, and so there's the practical and the mindset part. So I think if someone is struggling, I think you, the first thing that I would come up with is that spending plan. You know, a lot of people are very hesitant when you say create a budget. And I, I kind of agree with them. A budget mm-hmm. does seem um, a little restrictive at times. And I think people aren't using them properly. So I say, what create a spending plan. And this spending plan is on what it costs to be you what does it really cost to be you and then go back through it you know pull out your credit card statements your banking statements and really go through and categorize it with those four levels what are your basics make sure that those are taken care of what are your security needs what are your priority needs and then see what's left for your luxury A lot of times people do have the money, but they're spending it out of order. They're spending on luxury things that they really can't afford at that time. Exactly. Um, And so then it's like, well, they're spending on the luxury needs that they can't afford at that time. And so they're not saving. And so then your freedom and your security isn't taken care of. So then you feel even more resentment about money because you feel like you don't have it where you're buying out of order. And so I would say like, that's the, the, the first piece of advice that I would get is create, know how much it costs to be you. Um, and then if you have faith in whatever, whatever it is that you believe and you know that that is your provider. Exactly. Start, say that again. Start, <laughs> yes, start to understand that man is just the vessel. The business is just the vessel. The job is just the vessel. That whatever it is that you believe in is the provider. When you start to know who the provider is, change your language on your finances. And so yes. that means not talking negative about it, not allowing others to talk negative to you about their finances or yours, and start to be a little bit of more positive people give manifestation a bad reputation and bad connotations about it but it is just saying that these things that i want i believe that they will come and because i believe they will come they will come but a lot of people will talk themselves out of what they want the minute they say that they want it because they're like well i don't know how it can happen i don't know this and i don't know this and so you just talked yourself out of the very thing that you believed in and that you wanted. So it's no wonder that your manifestation doesn't come to uh, fruition. So then after you know, you know, what it is you want, believe and have faith and expect it to happen. A lot of people don't have what they want simply because they don't expect it to be true mm-hmm. or to come to pass, which makes sense because you're like, well, where I am doesn't, you know, mm-hmm. I haven't seen it. So how can I believe these things that I haven't seen? But the the truth is you're not expecting it to even come to pass. And so once you expect it to come to pass, we all get these great ideas. A lot of people have million dollar ideas in their head, Mm -hmm. but they're too scared to put it out into the world because they don't understand that um, how that they can be of service to the world. So they want to keep that information. They want to keep it or they they let the fear and the doubt come in. Um, but I, I, I definitely think that at some point a job isn't, can't be your only means exactly of, of revenue or income coming in because it's, it's capped, right? It's capped at what they, they deem to be um, your salary, but in, at a, at a business at your own, at your with your own business the sky is the limit the you know i I, the difference between a a broke business and a profitable one is just the mindset of the owner and so when you allow yourself to you know step into things that um you haven't done before you're finding solutions to problems whether it's your problem or someone else's And I think that, you know, that would be my other piece of advice is that, you know, get in different circles and different environments and and watch the language that you have, not over just money, but yourself. We are in a lot of environments that don't 
that that aren't positive. Yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, and watch watch your, your what's interesting is that when you change you your money and your relationships and all of that change and that's why it's never really about money um money is just the the, tool. the thing that we think we want yep. um but it, it really isn't so that would be all of, i know you said one piece no of them, you, but they you, all go you're together. no you're you're but they all they all go together they all I mean, go together you know, you're perfectly fine yeah. because it's pretty much what i'm uh i've been educating myself on and you're pretty much uh what i've been educating myself on spiritually and i know we we know we try to step not step on people's toes but i do talk on my podcast i believe in god and i'm a christian so um, you know, people that's listening to this, I know, you know, if it's not for you, then okay. But my, what, what she's saying is about your faith, um, believing that whoever your provider is, mine is God, that he will take care of it. And that I don't personally, for me, I I'm hearing, I don't, what I am, she's actually piggyback off what I've been educating myself about uh, spiritually in the Bible and what. I've been listening to uh, about money because I know personally that I had a not negative connotation about money. And so I have to believe that one, it's going to get taken care of. Two, I got to believe I'm going to invest in myself. And three, surrounding myself with the positivity and, and, and the people is people. It's what you listen to every day. Like she said, the manifestation. That's why I listen to I talked about this on another podcast. I listen to the manifestations every morning, have my kids listen to or the I am's or the I am app and things like that, because those things do get your mind generated because we're so, like she said in the beginning, there's so many negative thoughts. What is that? 95% of negative thoughts that we process that we got to remove that and replace it with the positive. So she's personally, guys, really, really helping me because I wrote down notes that she was talking. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes and that's breakthrough that's breakthrough that's though. that's breakthrough Whether, for me that's personally. breakthrough and i love that you are being so open about that this is your breakthrough because yeah. that gives your listeners the 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 realness of like i'm this, going through it this, too <laughs> i'm going through it too i've been there guys like i promise you i'm going through this this wall right now in my business and personal and i i don't i don't even want to spend the time to kind of figure out where where it stems from because i know you know it may be a little uncomfortable and i'm like i'm just gonna decide yeah. that this there's a new narrative about this i'm just deciding that this whatever i was thinking before i'm just not thinking it again and does it take work absolutely but you don't have to dig everything up. And I think that, you know, when people think about money, that's where that anxiety and stuff comes from. They think it's going to be a lot of work. It's not a lot of work, but it does require your time and attention. It, ain't, it doesn't require you to do this every day, all day, but, you know, a, a couple minutes a week of you being intentional about looking at where you are financially, a couple minutes of you being intentional about, Okay, I am saving. Pat your back on yourself on the back about that. Okay, I do have debt, and that's okay because that debt allowed me to get this and this and this. Um, and you know, a lot of people have bad feelings about debt or credit cards. And this is just my personal opinion on that. Debt is just you leveraging someone else's money so that you can buy whatever it is that you, that you need. Exactly. So if it is a credit card, if it is a loan, a student loan, I am happy that I was able to get a student loan. And I know a lot of people are like, I'm not paying it back. And they, you know, that's whatever. But that student loan allowed me to get a good job and be able to provide for my son and to make a lot of money and to live a good life. Yeah, I had to pay it back, but that's because I borrowed it from someone else. Exactly. Um, so, or even when you, you know, buy a house, I, you look at it like, hey, yes. buying a house, that's still someone else's money. That's still okay. someone else's money. And you have the peace of knowing that you have, um, you know, a safe, comfortable place for you and your family. Like, 
So I think when we take, again, the negativeness about, you know, money or debt off of it, it just becomes, okay, I just leverage someone else's money. Um, And now you have to pay it back. And if you pay it back on time, you get a positive credit score. You know, it's all linked. (laughs) And it's all about, you know, just what your perspective is and can you give it new meaning? I love it. I love it. So how can we contact you if we want you to be our financial (laughs) coach? um, Let us know how we could contact you. So I am Takesha Artist on all social media. So Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, a little bit of Twitter. Um, And my website is Takesha's Theory. So yeah, just follow and there's links on all of those things. And we'll have a link at the bottom, guys. We'll have all her links at the bottom. So if you want to reach out to her, reach out to her and just click the link at the bottom. Don't forget to share, 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 because we have to get this word out. This was uh, just a powerful podcast for me personally. I wasn't even expecting this. Um, So, I mean, it it was just enlightening for me. And I hope someone else, uh, whoever's listening, had a breakthrough with it. But I definitely did if you guys didn't. Um, And I just want to thank you, Takesha, for coming on. Thank you for uh, reaching out on the uh, platform, on the social media platform, just to even give me this opportunity. Um, I've learned a lot today from you. And I'm sure that I guess and the people that's going to listen and reach out to you listening to this are learning, is going to learn more. So, um, guys, I thank you for listening to the Breakthrough Podcast. Please like, share, comment. If you like this episode, please comment at the bottom. Don't forget that you can sign up with my email list, rebabelle.com. And we are going to see you next week. Thank you. Thank you, Takesha. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening in on today's show. You can find me online at rebabelle.com to order any of my products or my books. Or you can find me at Instagram at BreakthroughCoach underscore Thank you again and see you next week.